Good morning, how are you doing? Uh, welcome along, today is Monday, it is the 8th of May 2023. This is your ATM movement snap, Kelsey's having a bit of lying, so I'm stepped in to, 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 to do a DD, D, a double day day for you. It's uh, now and four, okay? So we've got eight and four, okay. Fingers are working, that's all right. <laughs> welcome, 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 if you're coming on board, say hello. If you're coming on board uh, on catch up, say hello as well. Let me know you're here. It's uh, a bit of an overcast morning here today. Uh, it was nice and sunny earlier on, but it's turned a bit overcast. Lovely afternoon in the garden yesterday. I uh, managed to get loads and loads of stuff done. Um, new fence has been put up, so I rearranged some stuff. Um, so we're, we're looking good out there. Got some lighting up that I've been waiting to put up. I was waiting for the new fences to go up before I could do that, so that's gone up. That looked really nice last night, actually. Um, the light on in the garden makes a bit of difference, doesn't it? A little bit of, a little bit of cheeriness into the, the place. So uh, here we are on this Monday morning. It's a bank holiday again. Uh, it's the Coronation Bank holiday today. Uh, for, um, so a day of, um, I was going to say a day of, of rest, day of peace, but it's not. We've got all the family coming around. So um, all the granddaughters will be here. Um, at the daughter, my son-in-law is uh, working. Uh, my other son, in, uh, son and son-in-law are away in Saundersfoot for the weekend. We yes, we saw on Facebook last night. Love Saundersfoot, beautiful part of the country. Um, down your way, Christine, I think, isn't it? Uh, not too far away from you, probably, I don't know, 50, 60 miles, something like that. But beautiful, love Saundersfoot. Um, I had the, the, the great pleasure of um, actually Assessing a course down in Tangby, um, probably not last year, the year before, and turned it into a bit of a, a, a long weekend, which was lovely. It was really nice. Anyway, who we got coming on board? We've got Sheila Day is coming on board. She's saying good morning. Happy bank holiday, everybody. Christine Perry's in from Port Talbot. Uh, Bristol's in with Francis McFarlane. Margaret Wood is in, I think that's Chesterfield, isn't it? Uh, good morning, Dave and everyone. Overcast here too. Good day, CFC uh, are going to Wembley, Company Football Club. Oh, are they? Or is it Chelsea Football Club? I don't know. Uh, good morning, Dave. I'm not a football person. Uh, good morning, Dave and Snackers. A lively day in front of you. Uh, quiet here. It, yeah, it'd be lively, but it'd be good. Uh, you know, we're very lucky to have the family very close by, so we spend lots and lots of time with them. And it's lovely seeing the granddaughters growing up. Uh, good morning, Dave and everyone. Back to the rain again today. George is in from uh, Cruden Bay. Just made it. Brain was elsewhere. I know that feeling, George. Uh, I was awake at 5.30. I uh, said I'd do this. I said I'd do the cover of this at 5.30. Ah, plenty of time. Next time I look at me clock. I'm doing stuff. Next time I look at me, me clock, though, it is 8 a.m. Now, I just need to go and let the cat out because she needs to go for a toilet. Uh, Christine Rowland is in. Hello, Dave, everyone, from a very damp and misty Penzance. Let me just go and let Moggy out and I'll be back. Come on, Moggs. That's Lottie sorted. She's got that got a bit of fresh air. She's been in all night. She she's a she's a lovely she loves her inside and she loves the sun. Uh National League playoff final. Um wow. Oh, okay. Still means nothing to me. Sorry, Margaret. I'm not, I'm not a football person at all. Uh Pat Colville is in morning from the Kingdom of Fife. Oh loving it. Kingdom of Fife is with us as well. Right, look, we must be around about 8 a.m. already, mustn't we? It must be wish, wish, ping time. Yeah, so let's lose the comments off the bottom of the screen. Shall we wish, wish, ping? Oh, good morning, everybody. Welcome along. You and myself, Dave Montgomery, standing in for Kelsey on this morning, Monday morning. It's 8 a.m. This is our first movement snack of the day. First opportunity to get everything moving, yeah? So we mobilise in this uh, movement snack, but we start off with a circulation booster. But before we do any of that... We decide whether we're going to do it standing or seated. Seated, strong, sturdy, chair, standing, fixed external support. I've got nothing on my feet. I've got my tutties out. Um, I'm on a carpeted floor though, so I, 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 that's okay. If you're on a hard floor, would solid, 
you know, concrete, tiled, anything like that, sensible, comfortable footwear. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, there's nothing on the floor that causes me an issue, it's plenty of space. Let's start by getting ourselves into a good postural position. <coughs> <coughs> I think I've just swallowed a fly or something. Right. If you're in your seated position, you need to bring yourself away from the back of the chair so you're supporting the upper body. From there, it's then a lift and a shift to bring yourself into the front third. Now, once you're in the front third of the chair, we line everything up. And we do exactly the same in standing. Heels in on my knees, knees in line with hips. Lift and lengthen to grow that a little bit taller out of our hips, bring the shoulders up, back, and then pressing them down to open across this rib cage. From there, we start with some circulation boosting. Heel raises, just bringing that foot off the floor, lifting the heel up, pulling up, coming up to the ball of the foot and the toes. Now, we start to get this moving, and then we start to make it a little bit bigger by taking it into a march, lifting the foot clear of the floor. Remembering that in seated, if you get fatigue into this hip flexors area, then it's back into that heel raise, all those diagonal toe taps forward. I don't know why I put both feet forward there, with diagonal toe taps forward. Once we've got this march going, let's try and take it a bit bigger if we can. And in standing, if we've got that bigger march, we can actually start to point the toes down towards the floor as well. So we get a bit of mobility into those ankles. One arm, just the one to start off with. The other was on your support if you're in standing. If you're in seated and standing, not using support, the other's just by your side. Now we're going to change it. So without support, you can just go for it. If you're needing support, hand comes down before the other hand comes off. Now, if your sport's in front, you can change hands as much as you want to, as you can in seated, and if you're not using sport. However, if the sport is to the side, a little bit more to it, you're going to need to keep the arm going a little bit longer, lose the arm, make the march a little bit smaller, take as many steps as you need to turn into your support, both hands go on as you face it, carry on turning round, you can take the other hand off, and then you can bring that other arm in. And then finally, in seated and in standing, if you're not using support, then there's both arms, both legs, and we can start to drive those through so we get a good boost to that circulation. Take a nice deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth so you're really filling the lungs with oxygen. And here we keep going with this, around about two or three minutes max is what we're looking for. Now as we get to that two or three minute max we can start to bring this down again so let's start to take the arms out, make the march a little bit smaller again, bring it back down into a heel raise, and then to a pause. A couple of deep breaths might be what you want to do at this point in time. From there, let's move into our mobilization. So we start with the upper body and the top half, top third, sorry, our head and shoulders. Basic support, as we were, heels in line with knees, knees in line with hips. I'll come a little bit closer, keeping the neck lengthened, lift the shoulders up towards the ears, and then press them back down. So we've got this lift, and we've got this press back down. You're looking for around about four or five of these. And once you've done your four or five, take a momentary pause and then rotate. Coming forward, back, together, and then down. So forward, up, past your earlobes, back together and down. Again, keeping that neck lengthened. And it's exactly the same in seated as it is in standing. Now, four or five of those, and then pause, and let's take it into the head turn. Have some support available in case you need it. It's really useful to have that there, because turning your head can make you feel a little disorientated. Eyeline stays level, we turn to the side, we pause in the center, and then we turn the other way. And this pause in the center is just momentary, just enough to allow the system in our ears to sort itself out before we turn again the other way. Four or five each way on this one. Thinking about how many times do we turn our head in a day? Loads, don't we? Once you turn your four or five each way, take a pause. And again, it's exactly the same in seated for these ones. And let's go into the back of the neck. Now we're going to have the fingers on the chin as a guide, that's all. Keeping the neck lengthened, keeping the eye line level, we draw back. So if we've got the fingers on the chin, keeping them there, we come back, but we don't push. Or, or we can keep the fingers where they are, return back into them as a guide. 
stacking the head back onto the top of the spine. So aligning that spine all the way down through the neck and into uh, the, the, the back area. So we're getting a good postural position within there. Four or five of those. And once you've done those four or five, have a pause and let's go back into a circulation boost, but just a reboost, okay? So it's the arms. Now, I've, I had a friend that I work with, one of my colleagues, uh, at the weekend, actually went to see Duran Duran. So we can have a re 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 reboost, and I can say it <laughs> quite, quite actively. It's, you know, there we go. She went and she had a lovely time. This reboost is 30 seconds only. So in seated, if you can do the march, great. If you need to do those heel raises or those diagonal toe taps because of fatigue into those hips, then go for it. It's about just giving a little boost back to that circulation as we head from the top area into our mid region, into our trunk area. Now, as we get to that 30 seconds, let's bring this down, bring it to a pause and reset this base. Take it wider, heels outside of your hips in line with your shoulders. Standing tall, move one, down to the side, pause in the centre and down the other way. Now, if your sport's in front, you're changing your hands every time. If your sport's to the side, then it's into your support, back to the centre and repeat it on that side. Four or five on that side and then turn. Seated, it's all about your bum. Your sitting bones stay firmly on that chair as you reach down to the side, pause in the centre and then reach down the other way. Getting a good range of motion. It's about lengthening through the side of the body. It's about thinking to how uh, we reach down to pick something up that might be down below us, might be to the side, those sorts of movements. The bottom stays firmly on the chair. Four or five on each side. Once you've done that four or five, let's take it into our trunk twist. Now let's look at this in seated firstly. In seated, the bottom stays firmly on that chair, as in standing, the feet stay firmly on the chair. In seated, as we rotate to the side and back into the centre, I get some input through my bottom as to whether I've got movement into those hips. In standing, it's about making sure we keep those hips still. And support-wise, the same, you can change every time. If it's to the side, into the support, back to the centre and then back to that support. Or, the support becomes your standing chair, if you like, to give you some sensory input, so bottom against it or hips against it. And you soften still, and as you twist to the side, you'll feel from the way that your bottom is touching that um, support, if you've got some movement into there or not. Keep those hips still, focus all this movement into the trunk area. Put in your coat on, if it's gonna be raining today, you need to go out that second arm going in. Put in your seat belt on, twisting to pick something up that might be by the side of you. Those are the moves where we use that. Plus, the trunk supports the other body all the time. So let's really mobilise it. Now once we've done that, we're going to go into our back extensions. So soften the knees, it's about the pelvis not moving this time. So again, you might want to use that support to give you sensory input. It's a lift of the chest and then a draw back to extend through the lower back. Can you see how the pelvis stays still so we're not tipping it? In seated, we get that input again through... <clears throat> the bottom and the top part of our thighs, which is why you might want to use your support to give you this. It's lifting and drawing back to feel that lengthening down through the back into the lower back. So lift and extend. Get that movement into there. Now, once you've done your four or five, <clears throat> have a pause. We're back into another circulation boost, reboost, but it's upper body this time. So drive the elbows backwards, get a good, driven, purposeful movement in through those arms. We might want to get a bit of rotation into the chest as well as we drive back, <clears throat> making it a little bit bigger. 30 seconds, one more time. Now you're seated is, uh, where you are and you're not looking to go to standing. Opportunity here to go over one of the trunk movements again or one of the head and shoulder movements. Otherwise, we're heading down to our final trio of uh, ankle, feet and toes. Now, as we bring this to the 30 seconds, let's bring it a little bit smaller and then bring it Back into a pause. Ankle, feet and toes, standing. Use support, don't focus on balance, focus on movement, okay, mobility. So have your support there, supporting knees stay soft. Toe on the floor, lift and put the heel in exactly the same place, taking your arm into the front. Splay the toes, then heels down, crunch as you come across, point as you go down. Four or five on one side, change to the other. In seated, we can do that same movement, just adjust those feet slightly. Toes. Now, 
splunch and splay. You may find, however, you can get a better movement by coming back into your chair. <clears throat> Still supporting yourself. Take the foot out in front, lift it off the floor about an inch or two inches, point the feet away and there you can scrunch the toes and then hit the toes in towards your shin and splay. And this will give you that same movement and that flexion, so the ability into our ankle, which is what we're looking at. Now, it's not about strength, so pop the foot down if you need to, between every one, every couple. Choice is yours. And certainly don't allow it to drift up. Watch only four or five on one side, take it to the other. Finally, in standing, we can take this step through where we can see the heel strike rolling through onto the ball of the foot and then coming onto the toes on the back. And that is that heel toe motion, that's why we do it. He, that is your, oh, he, hey, that is your 8 a.m. movement snack for today. Plenty of opportunities now to crowbar in additional movements as you go through the rest of the day. Have a good one. Stay mobile, stay active, stay dry if you can, and I'll see you at 4 o'clock. Toodles.